This is Engage New York, Module 3, Lesson 11. This is Concept Development. So we're going to start, and remember, our goal in this lesson is subtracting fractions. So we're going to start with just straight up two uh, fractions with unlike units. Then we're going to switch over and go to subtracting fractions with whole numbers. And I'm going to show you two different methods for using, for subtracting um, fractions with uh, mixed numbers. So <clears throat> finding that way that works best for you is really the key on those. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start with one third subtract one fifth. Now, can we do that? No, we don't have like units. So going back to one of our earlier lessons was to take the idea of creating equivalent fractions. That is the big idea with using the rectangular fraction models. So if I start with one third plus one fifth, I can see right away that they're not like units. So if I scoreboard and I find figure out my my common denominator, which hopefully you're catching on to quickly, finding that common denominator, right? So this first one, one third, I need to multiply by five. And when I multiply by five, I create, now how many do I have? Did I, did the amount of space change? No, it's still one third, but now I multiplied it by five and now it is five fifteenths plus, and on one fifth, I multiply by three, so I divide it into thirds, right, to multiply by three. Now I have three fifteenths. So the big idea of using these rectangular fraction models is to see that these are truly equivalent fractions. And you're just taking two fractions that are not on the same number line or do not have like units and creating an equivalent so they're still equal. So one third is still equal to five fifteenths. One fifth is still equal to three fifteenths. So when you add them together, you get eight. Oh, so sorry, it's subtraction. Ah, I'm subtracting. So when I subtract five, three from five, I'm gonna get two fifteenths. Let me fix that. 2 15ths. I got used to adding there. Okay. All right. So, understanding we're taking 5 15ths and you're going to subtract 3 from them. When I subtract 3 from them, 1, 2, 3, I'm left with 2 15ths left over, right? So, my answer is. 2 15ths. Alright, moving on. We don't have to use the rectangular model on 3 fifths minus 1 6. Instead, we can jump right in. This is just a review of what the concepts that we've been building on. Right here, we have 5 and we have 6. So, we're going to set this problem up. We're going to set this problem up as 3 fifths and we're going to have to multiply the top and bottom by a number, the same number, and then we're going to have 1, 6. Okay, so I need to find my common de denominator because I, can I subtract these two fractions? No, I cannot because they do not have like units. So if you're kind of getting the hang of these common denominators, you might automatically see what that common denominator would be, or if you don't, then you just go ahead and scoreboard, right? Five times one, five times two, five times three, five times four, five times five, five times six, six times one, six times two, six times three, six times four, six times five. Oh, I found it. I found that common denominator, right? So now I'm going to take and I had to multiply that by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? 
So I'm going to multiply whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. And on 6, I multiplied by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now I have 3 times 6 is 18 over 30. And I'm going to subtract 5 over 30. And now I get 3 over 30. But guess what? We can simplify that fraction. We can simplify that fraction because... 3 times 1 is hiding inside of 3, and 3 times 10 is hiding inside of 30. So we're going to cancel those out because that's technically 1 over 1, right? And so our answer is 1 tenth. This is what's left over. All right, now I'm going to show you two different methods for subtracting um, fractions with a mixed number. So method one, method one is we're going to pull out that, we're going to pull out your, your uh, whole number. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like. We're going to write one plus three-fifths, three-fourths minus three-fifths. Now, our next step is we are going to leave the one hole all by itself, and we're going to scoreboard, if need be, over here to find our common denominator. Now, hopefully you're realizing and you're starting to see the pattern. So what is our common denominator going to be? Hopefully you're able to pick out it's 20. So <clears throat> we're going to multiply by 5. We're going to multiply this by 4. And we're going to get 1 plus 15 over 20. Subtract 12 over 20. And <clears throat> we only need to subtract the fraction. So 1 and 3 twentieths is the answer. Now, let me show you method two. So there are two ways to, to do this. <clears throat> method two, we're going to take one and three fourths, and we're going to subtract three fifths. Now, remember what you learned about making an improper fraction. So, Okay, so we are going to change, instead of pulling out the whole number this time, we're going to change this into an improper fraction, then we're going to subtract. So 4 times 1 is 4, right? So 4 plus 3 is 7 fourths minus 3 fifths. Now, if you notice, we still have, the th we still have fourths and fifths as our denominators. Are they like units? No, they're not. Well, we already know what our common denominator is going to be. It's going to be 20. And we know what we need to multiply 4 by. We're going to multiply it by 5. And we have 3 fifths. And we're going to multiply it by 4. And we end up with 35 twentieths. Subtract 12 twentieths. And we're going to get... Let's see, that is going to give us 3, 23, 20 is. Now, now we're going to, we have an improper fraction. We don't want to leave it an improper fraction. So we're going to change, we're going to pull out 20 over 20 plus 3 over 20, and that gives us 1 and 3 20 is. So we end up in the same spot as over here. So there are two different methods. To, to use when you're subtracting fractions with a whole number. It's just finding the strategy that works best for you. So changing either into an improper fraction or only subtracting the, the actual fractional part of the fraction. So let's move on to problem four. 
All right, finding that what works best for you. That's the big idea here. So let's go ahead and let's pull out our, we have three and three fifths, subtract two and one half. So let's go ahead and pull out three, subtract two. And then we're going to move on to the rest of this. So three subtract two is gonna give us one, right? Plus three fifths subtract one half. So one plus three fifths subtract one half is our is how we're gonna start this. All right, so we have fractions that we're going to subtract. Are they like units? No, they're not like units. So we can always scoreboard to find our common denominator if we need to. So again, hopefully you're catching on to how, hopefully you're starting to see the pattern in creating those common denominators. So when you see five and two, you automatically think 10. How do I make 10? I'm gonna multiply by two. How am I gonna make 10 over here? I'm gonna multiply by five. So I have one plus six tenths subtract five tenths is equal to one and one tenth. Our second method is if we started again up here at three and three fifths, subtract two and a half, and you decided to change this into an improper fraction. So five times three is 15, 15 plus three is 18. So 18 fifths subtract, and then we might as well change this one too. So two times two is four, four plus one is five, five halves. So now, do we have like units? Can we just subtract? No, we can't. We have to change those into common units, right? Like units. So 18 over five times a number subtract five over two times a number. And hopefully you're catching on here. So 18 times two is 36 over 10. Subtract 25 over 10 gives us 11 tenths. And you can't just leave that like that. You are going to change that into an improper fraction. So 11 tenths becomes, so I'm gonna pull out 10 over 10 plus one tenth. That gives us one and one tenth. Did we end up with the same answer? Yes, we did. All right, our final problem in concept development, we're gonna do it two different methods. Okay, our last problem for concept development is five and three fourths subtract three and one six. I'm gonna challenge you to try this problem independently, choose the method that you like best, or you can do both, just to try it out to see how good you are and see if you understand both strategies and then come back and we will check the work. All right, so I prefer this method and this is the way I wanted to show you. So five subtract three is two. I brought that down, three fourths subtract one six. I created my common denominators, subtracted, and then I simplified. So that is the big idea. So for problem set, you're gonna come on over here. You're gonna generate equivalent fractions with the same, to get the same unit and then subtract, choose your way. Then you have one, two, three, whoops. You have three word problems. And remember, what is our operation that we're working with in this lesson? Well, it's subtraction. So what do you think you're going to be doing? That's right, subtraction. All right, so good luck at problem set. Come back to check your work when you have completed it to check your work to see how you're doing. All right, good luck.